Hi, Als here, and in this video we'll be exploring the statement of cash flows under IFRS. The statement of cash flows is the last statement before the notes to the financial statements. Remember this is for public corporations who must use IFRS and private corporations who choose to use IFRS. In our last video on the statement of financial position, I demonstrated the interconnection between the various statements using slides. Understanding the interconnection between the statements is critical when developing the statements. Today, to show you a different view, I'm going to use a matrix. Now you'll see in the far left column the statement name and the amount that is carried to another statement. If you follow the row to your right, you see which statement this amount is carried to. Let's focus on just one row so that you can see an example. Here you can see that the profit or loss amount from the income statement is used as an opening number in the statement of comprehensive income. It is also added or deducted from the opening retained earnings on the statement of changes in equity. Finally, it's used as an opening number for operating activities in the statement of cash flows in direct method. You can also see very quickly that the profit or loss amount is never used directly in the statement of financial position. As you can see, this matrix quickly shows you the interconnection between the different financial statements. Let's go back to the full matrix and focus on the last row. It shows that cash from the current assets section of the statement of financial position is used as the closing cash on the statement of cash flows. If you look at the last column in the matrix, you see the two statements which are interconnected to the statement of cash flows. The profit or loss from the income statement and the closing cash balance from the statement of financial position. Although you don't have to use a matrix to understand the interconnection between the various financial statements, it is one way to understand this concept. The statement of cash flows can be prepared using the direct or indirect method. Let's quickly look at the differences before we move on. The direct method lists the inflows and outflows from each type of operating activity a company performs. Cash flow categories can include cash collected from customers, cash paid to suppliers, and cash paid to employees just to list a few. This method is preferred by IFRS because it is more informative for users, clearly showing the sources and uses of cash in operations. The indirect method focuses on the differences between net income under accrual accounting and cash from operations under cash accounting. It starts with net income and adjusts for non-cash items. The direct method is more difficult for users to understand, but it does not stop approximately 98% of all US, European and Canadian companies from using the indirect method to calculate cash flows from operating activities. Why is that? Because it's easier and less costly to prepare. One benefit for users of the indirect method is that it highlights earnings management. We'll further explore this concept when we cover the development of the cash flow statements in a later video. As you can imagine, we'll be using the Statement of Cash Flows indirect method for purposes of all of our videos. The Statement of Cash Flows is divided into three activities, Operating, Investing and Financing. Description of these activities have already been covered in a previous video, but let's just review them. Financing is activities that fund a company, either through debt or equity. Investing is activities that result from buying or selling property, plant, equipment, intangibles, or investments in other corporations. Operating activities is when a company does their business day to day, selling and delivering goods or services. To obtain an in-depth understanding of these activities, please see my video on business activities. Let's do a quick check of your understanding so far. The payment of interest on a long-term loan is considered either an operating or financing activity. IFRS allows preparers to choose where to place interest payments. The reason why will be explored in future videos on developing a statement of cash flows. Now that we understand the activities that make up the statement, we can look at an example. Note that the statement is so large that I've divided it into two slides so that you can see each activity better, but the statement is actually one statement. Although I have set up the statement in columns for easy viewing, the accounts can all be listed in one column and the amounts in another. As always, the statement starts with a heading, which must include the company name, the title of the financial statement, and the period of time covered. Note, similar to every financial statement except the statement of financial position, this statement is for a period of time, most commonly one year. Note that profit from the income statement is the beginning point under the indirect method. 
all the other amounts are reconciling items between profit from the income statement and cash flow from operating activities. This includes things such as depreciation and the change in current asset and liability accounts from the statement of financial position. At the bottom of this section, we see that operating activities resulted in a net cash inflow of $21,400. Investing activities are next. You'll note there's a net cash outflow of $7,500. This is due to the purchase of both equipment and investments. Finally, let's look at financing activities. Some of the items under financing activities have a connection to the statement of changes in equity. Here we see that the company issued shares as well as repurchased some. They also pay dividends. Let's quickly flip back to the statement of changes in equity so we can see the relationship. Both the statement of cash flows and the statement of changes in equity show a dividend payment of $2,500. That's because this amount was paid in cash. In addition, both statements show an issue of shares of $11,600. Again, that's because this amount was received in cash. Note that the repurchase of shares on the statement of changes in equity is $5,000, but the outflow on the statement of cash flows was $7,500. That's because the $5,000 is historical cost, and the $7,500 on the statement of cash flows was cash. Further discussions of why these two amounts are different will be covered in a future video. Looking at the total from the financing activities, we can see there was a net outflow of $1,700. The bottom of the cash flow statement shows the net change in cash. This is a summation of all three activities. Operating inflow of $21,400, investing and financing outflows of $7,500 and $1,700 respectively. The net increase in cash was therefore $12,200. Add this to the beginning cash balance of $72,300 and we get the ending cash balance of $84,500. This amount is the cash balance on the statement of financial position under current assets. Again, this is the interconnection between the statement of financial position and the statement of cash flows. Let's take a quick look at the statement of cash flow again. Remember we start with the appropriate heading and profit from the income statement. We move on to the operating activities and then the investing activities, with the financing activities listed last. The net change in cash is then added this is when a net inflow is demonstrated, as it is here, or deducted, if there's a net outflow, from the opening cash balance to obtain the closing cash balance from the statement of financial position. Let's check your understanding for a second. Remember to pause the video to determine your own answer before continuing. The president of Green Corporation announces the company is expanding into new markets. You examine the statement of cash flows and see a net cash outflow from operating activities and inflow from both investing and financing activities. Does the statement of cash flows support the President's announcement? No, no it does not. A net outflow from operating activities means cash outflows are greater than inflows. Since operating activities are the only sustainable source of cash, this does not support expansion plans. In addition, an inflow from investing activities means the company is selling assets, not buying assets necessary to expand into new markets. So, what questions does the statement of cash flow answer? For investors, it helps them determine, in conjunction with the income statement, if there will be enough cash in the future to pay dividends. For lenders and other creditors, it helps them determine if there is cash available to pay debts as they come due. It also helps them determine if the company will need further financing in the future. Finally, all external users can use the cash flow statement with the income statement to help predict future cash flows. We have now completed all the financial statements under IFRS, but there is an important addition to the statements which we have not covered, the notes that accompany the financial statements, and that'll be the topic of our next video.